Hey everyone, welcome back to another lesson here on the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about why I switched my Amazon FBA strategy from private label to brand building. Those of you who don't wanna watch the whole video and just want the answer right away, it's because I couldn't make enough profit doing private label consistently. It was too volatile for me. I'm a little bit risk adverse. I don't like not being able to count on something. When I started my business six years ago, I wanted to start a business so that I can create a form of income in my life that's consistent for me that I don't need to report to a boss. I want to quit my job, start a business, and then pay myself running that business, which I did. But then once I started realizing the inconsistency of the profits with private label due to the next six things that I'm gonna be telling you about, I had to find something else and brand building was the answer to that. I now run a successful made in the USA brand that sells on Amazon. We've launched two products so far and I'm now in the process of launching my third product. We get into the six things that I'm going to be discussing about why I couldn't consistently make private label work for myself because I know a lot of you out there are considering doing it. I'll let you know that I put a bunch of effort into a seven day free course slash challenge for new beginner Amazon FBA sellers in which you'll get a video from me to your email every day for seven days straight showing you over my shoulder how to do some of the more complicated things in this business step by step. Number one, I was selling in problem solution markets. Okay, this, this means that the customer has a problem, they buy something for the solution. So problem solution markets, you have a problem, I have a solution, you buy my solution, we're done here, right? You don't care about my brand, you don't care about what I'm doing, you probably don't even know what the brand is, you just ordered the thing that you thought would solve your problem. Number two, there's no repeat purchasability. So all the products that I sold, and most of the products that I see anyone on YouTube talking about being private label products, have zero chance of a customer buying that product again. Is there a chance they might buy two up front? Sure but they're not coming back to you. We're building a brand on a product that can only be sold one time. Stick around, you'll, you'll soon see why that's a problem. Number three, price wars. So private label as a model is riddled. It's like a pandemic of price wars, right? There are so many Chinese sellers just open up, you know, a software that can tell you the origin of a seller on almost anything on Amazon. It's so, it's so many Chinese products, and guess what? You cannot compete with them on price. I promise you they will win, okay? Sure, if you're a master at sourcing and you can leverage huge quantities and get your price down to nothing and maybe source in North America, and it, the beginner seller is not doing these things, okay? I'm not making this video for everyone, for the guy with a million bucks that can manufacture in-house and get the price squeezed down and sure okay you can compete on price not a overarching statement of impossibility of competing on price but on amazon for beginners in the private label model price wars are a huge issue number four the customer did not care okay and this goes back to the problem solution issue right they're just coming because they need something i need a pen boom i go i buy the one of the ones at the top we're done okay the customer did not care about a better option. So every time I tried to improve or differentiate my product on Amazon, it was often met with very little enthusiasm. Just like, yeah, it's great. A little bit different bundle, a little bit different this, but I'm just gonna buy the cheaper one. I'll give you a good example of this. The other day I ordered a, like a little uh, slip lead for my dog. Not even a slip lead, no, it's just a long leash. I just looked at the lowest price one that was gonna arrive the fastest. I did not even look at images. I don't care. It's a 50 foot leash. I know what I'm getting, right? You don't need to sell me on it. I'm not looking at your enhanced brand content, comparing it to, I don't care. Give me the cheapest one that gets here the fastest. I'm gonna make a bold statement. As a new Amazon seller selling your first product, you're not winning that battle. You're just not, right? You're not. You're, you're not winning the low priced, customer doesn't care style offer, competing with people who are ordering 10,000 units a month and getting that price down to nothing. Five, long lead times. So when I was selling on Amazon through early 2020s, right, the lead times that I was experiencing ordering from Alibaba just kept seemingly growing, shipping prices just kept seemingly rising. It was taking me longer and longer and longer to get inventory inbound, which was making it harder and harder to, and harder to positively cash flow. It's like I'm spending all this money on inventory, right? Because I have to get it in four months ahead of when, or else I'm gonna go out of stock. 
that's a huge problem, right? So I need to reduce that lead time so I can send in inventory less frequently so that I can actually sell through inventory every month and keep reloading it and making money on a shorter time frame. Those long lead times were just killing me, man. And then number six, my CAC was too high. CAC, cost to acquire a customer. Something that a lot of people aren't talking about in the Amazon FBA space. A lot of people are selling fake crap out there too, so you gotta be careful. No, you can't just go sell an ultrasonic pest repeller because look, this guy sells 30,000 a month. I don't care, okay? Now, customer didn't care was number four. Now, I don't care <laughs> about that advice because you're gonna have to spend $23 to acquire a customer on your stupid product and you're not gonna make any money. Again, my cost to acquire a customer being too high kind of led back to a lot of the same things that we mentioned in the earlier five steps before this last step. It being a problem solution market, being the price wars, the customer not caring, right? All of those things, if I have no margin there because I'm not a premium product, because there's no premium bracket, because the customer doesn't care, I don't have room to spend $20 to acquire a customer. I need to acquire a customer spending four bucks, three bucks, six bucks. And again, the new Amazon seller, you're not doing that. So again, if I've got your attention, you're like, well, what the hell? Um, I just wanna remind you, I go over this in way more depth in my free challenge down below. Uh, I just wanna give out more value this year and that's one of the big ways that I'm doing it. So let me know how you do it. It's my actual email, you can reply to that um, and let me know how you're enjoying it. Okay, now I know what you're thinking, Paul, how do I fix this? How do I become successful? What did you do? You changed your strategy, what did you do? I did the opposite of the last six things that I just said. Problem solution market became enthusiast customer, okay? Problem solution, I go, I buy the thing, I never come back, I don't care the brand. Enthusiast market, I care about the brand, I want a better quality product that does the thing that I enjoy doing more often. No repeat purchase became, yes, there's repeat purchase and returning customers. Price wars became look for markets where customers actually have already established they're willing to pay more and then compete with the people who sell at more, become the clear offer at that higher price point. Just destroy that premium bracket. Just become the new face of that price level. Customer didn't care becomes customer cares a lot. They love this thing. It's Saturday morning, they're thinking about this thing, okay? Maybe it's not even they care a lot in that way, but they want a better quality product. I might not wake up Saturday morning and I'm thinking about the quality of my BCAAs that I take, but when it comes time to purchase them, I don't buy the cheapest ones. I buy the ones that I think are reputable, that I would want to put in my body. Long lead times became sourced from the USA and get that lead time down to two weeks. I just placed an order for my new, I don't know why I pointed over here, but I thought my phone was there. Placed a new order for my new product, seven day lead time. Hey, need new products, supplier seven days. Hey, it's ready, send me the labels. Labels go out, Amazon picks it up, it's at the warehouse in four more days. 11 day, we're talking squash that lead time down to nothing. That lets me order less inventory, which lets me keep my account health super high, sending in less inventory to Amazon. I can control my inventory levels with much more precision. I have to spend way less on inventory because I don't have to order four, five, six months of inventory at a time. So my storage fees come down. It just everything about that lead time getting cut to two weeks, three weeks, 30 days, the longest versus 70 days, 80 days, 90 days helped me tremendously. And CAC was too high. Well, drive cost to acquire a customer down. How do we drive the cost to acquire a customer down? What's the opposite of high CAC? Low CAC. How do you get low cost to acquire a customer? Higher conversion rate. How do you get higher conversion rate? Better value proposition, better listing, better creative, better photography, better enhanced brand content. Everything they can see affects your conversion rate. Okay, so if they're making a decision and they care and you shock them and you get their attention, now take their attention and bring it to something awesome that you did and then get them to feel joy, get them to laugh, get them to come away from your listing knowing something they didn't know. And then more people out of 100 buy. So maybe instead of 17 clicks to make a sale, now I only need eight clicks to make a sale. And my CAC just got cut in half. Now, keep in mind, it's not that my market is all above $30, $50, $40. Like, that's not why. There are sellers in my market who sell at $14.99. I'm at close to $40. Now, 
why am I priced that high? Because I saw that other sellers could successfully sell that high, so I'm gonna come in and become, like I said, the face of that premium price bracket. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe down below. I'll be seeing you in another video here on the channel tomorrow, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in there. Okay, thanks so much, later.